What's up? It's Brad from Click 98.9. I'm here with three of the members of Walk Off the Earth. And you guys kind of got your, got all the attention from doing some really cool covers. And then you said, well, no, here's an original song. And then they're like, oh, they're not just a cover band. They're just a really good band, and we want to see what they can do. So walk me through a little bit of the process between awesome, very unique covers on YouTube to moving into your own space. And what did that space did that space exist beforehand anyway? Uh, it definitely existed before. We, were, we had been a band since 2006, and we'd been touring with our original music for a long time. We had two albums out before we even before we even dropped our first cover on YouTube. So we had like a backlog of songs, and then once we started, um, you know, getting people's attention with some covers, um, before we even blew up, there was you know those people were checking out our original stuff, and, and we were gaining an original fan, original music fan base right from the start. So it was always something we did before any covers. So. Was it, was it a thought process though, or was it like, hey, let's just throw some covers on YouTube and just maybe some people will enjoy that and then enjoy our regular music? Was it, was it an actual conversation, or was it just like something you guys decided to do? Um, we kind of knew that the, the whole YouTube thing was you know, really starting to snowball, and a lot of people were going to be really interested in it pretty fast. So, uh, and then you know, the best way to kind of get your music out there in social media is to do stuff that people are familiar with and stuff that people really love and they, that they can connect with. And just you know, doing covers or doing songs that people will know is one way to do that. So we just, we did, there, there was a, thro a thought process behind it. It wasn't just like, oh, let's just do this and then you know, maybe something awesome will happen. You, I mean, we're, we're all pretty, pretty smart. We know what we're doing. We have good planning skills, so. <laughs> well, I think it's important that you say that because a lot of bands will be like, oh no, I just, this is totally organic. You know? But you're like, no, 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 there's a business here. And we want to show people that we can do this other thing and then show them we can do this other thing. And so I think that's smart that you're like, no, there's a business. And we sat down and said, hey, this is a good idea. Let's do it for our brand. And it's worked out. Um, I think there's something to like changing the, the way the song has originally been recorded, too. Like it's, there's a difference between a cover band in a bar who wants to sound like Pearl Jam right. or like someone who's trying to put their own spin on it. And so and that's. That's the cool thing about certain YouTube artists, and, and you know, and that's why people search it out because they want to hear different versions. And some people like folk rock, and they don't necessarily like the sound of pop music right. or whatever. So they want to hear, it, you know, so it done in a different way. So that's what we, we give to people sometimes. It doesn't get any more original than a bunch of people playing on one guitar, which seems to be the coolest part of like this is the one thing. All oh, those those guys that play like eighty three people on one guitar. So like, and I heard it was how many takes? How many take? You were involved in the whole thing. How many takes was it until you actually nailed it for the YouTube video? Um, we changed the number a lot because we actually don't remember. <laughs> but uh, it was a lot. I mean, it was over thirty, maybe forty. But most of the videos, um, you know, it's not like when you're doing it live. When you play it live, you got one shot. When you're doing a video, you can do it as many times until everybody nails it. And uh, there's a certain perfectionist in the band, which is right beside you, that doesn't like the video not to be perfect. No, I'm just joking. But um, we do it a hell of a lot of times until we got it right. And uh, you guys have done it live, though, right? And uh, did you, have you nailed it live? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing about live. Like, when, if you're listening to a band on a record, you're going to listen to exactly... Uh, the way they want you to hear it. Anytime you hear a band live, it's never going to be the same. There's always imperfections, and I think that's part of it that makes it genuine. Is when something isn't perfect, it makes it a live show, right? I uh, I have a rule in general. It's I will not like a band until I've seen them live. Like I'll be like, okay, that's a cool song, but you know, <laughs> not going to play this game until I see them live. And you guys are fantastic live, as we just saw in Click 989's Acoustic Lounge. Is, I mean, as the perfectionist, you've just been called out. <laughs> as the perfectionist, is, is there some live stuff that kind of gets to you sometimes, or are you just rolling with it? Oh, of course, yeah. I'm like, I'm a bit obsessive, and so I'm always listening to like everyone's playing too. So like at the end of the show, I'm like, hey, like you hit the wrong chord there. You know that, right? <laughs> but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just as bad as everybody else. Like I got lots of mistakes going on too, but I'm, I'm always just like kind of just making sure that we can always get better. It's just, yeah. That's it's, it's just the way I... I work so it's just it's good business yeah. forget about the art of it. it's good business to always try to make the product better um, you know the creative process has to be interesting there's a are there a lot of cooks in the kitchen or are there just a few cooks in the, the kitchen I mean how does how does that creative process work um, well we we touch on a lot of different things and I think each each person mainly like Johnny and Marshall and I all have our strengths in certain areas so you know it just kind of depends on which thing we're doing like if it's a 
if it's a production thing, you know, Johnny does pretty much all of the production for the band. Um, if it's a writing thing, it's the three of us. Marshall does a ton of writing. If it's an art thing, like I'm really into that and like the creative process. So it's like, if it's a live show, you know, there's there's certain people that will step up and take more of the the reins on that. And then, you know, if there's there's videos and there's it, it just depends on what we're doing at the time, really. Wait, um, did you want to say something? Oh yeah, no. yeah, that's it. She nailed it. When it comes down to yes or no decisions, who makes them? That would be Johnny. Well, I mean, it's usually <laughs> common sense. I mean, there's not too many like, you know, massive fights over like decisions. It's just like we talk about it and whatever. So, I mean, we at the radio station we have a staff of like, you know, of on-air person three. We can't make any decisions. So that's why I'm so curious about like, you know, how the process goes. But uh, we're here at Walk Off the Earth. If you want to see the live performance at Click 989's Acoustic Lounge, you can do that. Go to click989.com. And thank you, guys. Thanks, man.